Welcome back to another video. My name is Michael. I'm the founder of Buffalo Performance and Analysis, where we combine sports science, strength and conditioning, and sports performance to give coaches the tools necessary to build the next level of elite athletes. In this video, we are doing a article review on the article red, amber, or green. Athlete monitoring in team sport, the need for decision support systems. Now this is by Robertson, Bartlett, and Gaston, and it goes over tracking and monitoring uh, athletes and using a traffic light system to easily portray data. So going into it, um, you know, the, the purpose of a traffic light system is just that, to show red, amber, or green data points. So it's kind of easy to see and understand where the athlete is for that day, week, or month. Um, so looking at it, you know, a traffic light system is going to use historical data to generate a recommended or assessment to a user. Um, however, there are a number of challenges that are required to be overcome in order for decision support systems to provide ongoing value to organizations. And so this kind of this article is going to go over uh, some of the challenges, how to address those challenges, and then looking forward to the future. So a traffic light system is great. It's going to provide rapid insights. All you have to do is look at a color, red, amber, or green. You don't have to look at the data points. You don't have to compare RPE, stress, soreness, sleep, anything like that. It just gives you red, amber, green. And that's what's one of the best parts of a, uh, you know, a decision support system like this is that it's so easy to use. Um, moving on, we see that some of the uh, data points that they collect are going to be self-reported athlete wellness, musculoskeletal screening scores, training load, fatigue, fitness, and physiological testing and benchmarking. From this, the data that they collect is going to be used to adjust training programs uh, or the treatment of an athlete. And the goal of this is to avoid undertraining or overtraining. It's going to be used to reduce the likelihood of injuries, illnesses, and to determine the effectiveness of training programs to ensure the maintenance of performance. When it comes to validating the decision not to train an athlete, uh, one of the main issues is it's not really clear what is used to validate the decision to restrict an athlete's training. Uh, there's two kind of schools of thoughts. The first is approaching it from the in injury prevention side of things, and the other is kind of uh, performance-based metrics. Um, so when we're looking at injury uh, pre prevention metrics, we're looking at, you know, there's a low injury incidence rates in regards to uh, injuries compared to the time that an athlete is in session or in game. It's going to be extremely conservative in nature because of that. And then additionally, because it's so conservative, an athlete may miss a session that they don't need to miss um, because of of the fear of injury and that's going to have an effect on the flow of training as well as the team dynamics right if your starting player if your messy is out of training for the day for fear of injury the team has to kind of adjust their game plan around that that one athlete being absent and so that really does have an impact on the flow of training and the team dynamics from that aspect um, when looking at it from the perf uh, performance metric side of things uh, in team sports, it's really difficult to define performance and then to uh, track performance, especially from the kind of sports science side of things. Um, additionally, because we're looking at a team setting, we have a team of athletes and there's going to be a large variation in the individual performance and the day-to-day -day variation that's going to make it a little bit harder to standardize the data and ensure that it's valid. With that being said, uh, in this current time, traffic light systems are really limited to a predictive tool. All they can do is really partially explain why an injury did or did not happen. With that being said, the question has to be asked, how can the evidence behind traffic light methods be improved without losing the practical qualities that make them so popular? That leads us to two main points. The first is Occam's razor, which states that the simplest explanation is usually the best one. The second of which is what we see here in figure one, the five key factors 
of a decision support system. So we see burden, cost, time, interpret, and measure. Uh, the article goes into a little bit more detail, but I just want to briefly go over uh, figure one. When looking at this paragraph about data interpretation and decision-making consequences, we see some really great points that support a traffic light system. You know, coaches aren't necessarily statistically trained, uh, and so having a really easy red, uh, amber, or green uh, traffic light system to look at makes their life a lot easier. Um, additionally, a traffic light system is going to be really um, is going to take a lot off the burden of the athlete, and it's really cost effective. So it kind of goes over those those five key factors that we looked at in Figure One. Um, but what we want to think about is the delivery flexibility and the ability to generate visualizations rapidly uh, to ensure that all stake stakeholders can interpret results for their given cause. Step two, the researchers go over in which format should traffic light system data be analyzed. They touch on z-scores and how that's great for the standardized position of an individual within the team setting or with reference to their own baseline data. Uh, so z-scores can be a great way to utilize the data when looking at a red, amber, green traffic light system. Moving forward in step three, we're looking at how traffic light data should be analyzed and interpreted. The big key that the researchers make is that the when we're looking at repeated measures, the data should be grouped, whether it's by name or, or by position, but it needs to be grouped because otherwise the relationship between the variables uh, can be overstated. Other models such as a linear model or a machine learning algorithm might be able to allow for any potential nonlinearity, but when looking at large data sets or looking at missing data, a red, amber, green is actually going to be a little bit more functional in regards to portraying data to a stakeholder. And so that leads us to understanding what data needs to be gathered and interpreted to make a meaningful change. Uh, so common ones that are used today are standard deviation, the effect size, the smallest worthwhile change, coefficient of variation, and uh, the risk ratio. In figure three, we take a look at an example of a red, amber, green. Uh, we're looking at the load, the previous four weeks, the four week mean, and the standard deviation. And we can see by player, uh, whether they're in the green, amber, or red, and we're able to see just how easy it is to digest this data. So looking forward to the future, it's important to remember that we have both a moral and ethical obligation to our athletes, and that we're trying to make decisions that are going to best manage them to ensure both their safety and their success. The researchers have gone ahead and highlighted uh, seven key takeaways from this article regarding the future of uh, traffic light systems. And I think it's really important that we take a look at these seven. Um, I've gone ahead and highlighted them. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and post a link to this article. It's a free um, PDF. And I highly suggest that you take a look at the article and understand how to utilize traffic light systems within your organization.